These five men, all current or former Terre Haute police officers, claim they're victims of political vengeance. In the fall of 1991, they supported Republican George Ralston in the city's mayoral election. Incumbent Mayor Pete Chalos won that election, and the officers claim he tried to pay them back for their lack of support. They say they had their shifts changed as punishment. The officers filed suit more than two and a half years ago, alleging that former assistant chief Ray Watts authorized their shift changes. At the time, Gerald Loudermilk was still chief of police. He said today that Watts came into his office with the schedule after the officers were transferred. He pointed down to the chief and said, there's a seven that was against us at Giddy, Giddy time. Loudermilk says he responded to Watts by saying, quote, hello lawsuit, unquote. Under cross-examination from city attorney Eric Fry, Loudermilk testified that he understood the men were being transferred for political reasons. Did you ever tell Ray Watts he couldn't do, couldn't transfer any seven people because of political activity? I never told Mr. Watts he couldn't transfer anybody because that was his responsibility. Watts is expected to testify later this week that he doesn't recall ever having such a conversation with Loudermilk. The city, meantime, denies the shift changes were politically motivated, claiming instead they were intended to solve scheduling problems. The officers are seeking $25,000 each in damages and an admission from the city that their politics cost them their preferred shifts. John Barr, Action 10 News, Terre Haute. Terre Haute Police Chief Ray Watts says his department is sensitive to the needs of its officers when work shifts are handed out. We try to work as much as possible with every officer to try to make sure that they get what they want. But don't try telling that to these men. Instead of getting their preferred shift, they say they got the shaft. They say they were all transferred without warning by then Assistant Chief Ray Watts because of their support for George Ralston. Had you requested that transfer? No, I did not. Has any of your superior officers ever told you why you were transferred? No, they haven't. The officers say they suffered personal hardships when their shifts were changed. I lost quite a bit of time with my wife. Uh, why is that? Because being gone in the evening and, and she works. And the officers she say they there, lost uh, money too. Many had second jobs they had to quit. The commander for the midnight shift at the time says he saw no reason for the shakeup. I don't think they should have occurred, no, sir. Do you, do you know, did you know of any uh, legitimate reason within the department for the transfers? I didn't feel there's any reason for it. But city attorney Eric Fry countered, citing a lack of hard evidence that the transfers were politically motivated. Did Chief Watts ever threaten you or any way to try to get you to support Mayor Chalos? No, sir. Did he ever promise you anything if you would switch over me for Chalos or make any comment to you that you ought to get on the Chalos bandwagon or anything like that? No, sir. You have no facts at all to support any contention that your transfer was because you supported uh, candidate Ralston, do you? No, sir. Yesterday, former Chief Gerald Loudermilk testified that Watts told him the transfers were to, quote, get even, unquote. Did you at any time say to him, these was the seven that was against us, it's get even time? No, sir. Tomorrow, Terre Haute Mayor Pete Chalos could take the stand to relive a political battle that's still very much alive in federal court. John Barr, Action 10 News, Terre Haute. I do. The players in this court drama are as politically charged as the allegations in the case. Jim Bob, chairman of the local Republican Party, taking on a man who's become a democratic institution. Isn't your uh, administration well known for its vindictiveness? I'm an objector. I think that's a ridiculous that's statement. Mayor, uh, and inadmissible, according to Judge John Tinder, but it was by uh, no secondly, means the only uh, testimony uh, with political overtones. Was well, Mr. Bopp active in this last election? Very much so. I, I object. It goes beyond. Uh, the questioning centered most on who Chalos talked to about the shift changes and when. He testified he first talked to then Assistant Chief Watts about the transfers after the five officers filed suit in January of 1992, not before they were transferred in December of 1991. Sir, Bob said no. today that contradicted earlier testimony. Was that a lie or is what you just testified to? I did, I did not testify that I talked to him in November. 
I testified that I talked to him after I read it in the press and was asked by the press. That was not in November. Bob kept up the line of questioning, attempting to prove we Chamo's no plan to transfers as a political payback. Did you make the following statement? Quote, well, when I get this election wrapped up, I'll take care of that business. No, I didn't make that statement. Two witnesses testified that former assistant chief Ray Watts did some political arm twisting. Robert Abinett Sr., the father of one of the officers filing suit, says Watts questioned his son's political ties. And he approached me and he asked me uh, what I thought Rob was doing. Officer James Jones no, says well, Watts asked him to put a Chalos bumper sticker on his car. Police matron Shelva Butch Warner also took the stand. She denied running the license plate of a Ralston supporter for political reasons. She also denied telling the sister of a police officer that the five transferred officers got what they deserved. Okay, did you tell Cindy that uh, you just don't pull that shit in Terre Haute, end of quote? No, sir. The plaintiffs are expected to wrap up their case tomorrow. John Barr, Action 10 News.